It's time to start bringing my poor soul of a Subaru back to life because it's been sitting dead for far too long. And plus, look at that turbo, man. We just wanna hear that turbo go. We wanna hear the six cylinder goodness, don't we? So what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. In the last video you guys saw, we got our new built EG33 back. It has taken seven months for me to get that engine back, and it is time to start putting it back together. I was gonna start tomorrow, but you know, I'm just impatient. It's like 7 p.m. right now, and I just wanna get cracking on this engine. God, dude, it just looks so beautiful. So with our beautiful six cylinder here, we can't get the heads on quite yet because I have to go drop off one head at the machine shop in the morning to get it resurfaced and hot tanked. I should have it back same day. Uh, but what we can do is start building out our short block here. So what Outfront did is these are a new set of EG33 case halves. These are the ones that I picked up back in December, I wanna say. They went through, they re-closed decked the surface. So we have a V3 closed deck. We are reusing four of our old custom JE pistons. And then we've got two new ones in there. Someone was asking about the color difference. They're the exact same piston the exact same coating those ones have just been ran for a thousand miles now what we can do today is get our oil pump on get our oil pan on and maybe a few accessories on the top of the engine i'm not entirely sure quite yet now there's a couple differences from what we have back here from what we used last time we are using the exact same rcm 12 millimeter oil pump so that's going to be going on the engine we did not have an aftermarket oil pan last time this is a nas performance eg33 turbo oil pan there is a dash 10 fitting on the side here for the oil return there's a fitting on the bottom for the oil drain we actually have a scraper now for the uh, windage tray i guess you could say and the biggest changing factor in this setup is we have an aftermarket oil pickup now which highly resembles the killer b1 but on top of that we have actual baffling in our oil pan, which will allow us to be able to keep the oil where it needs to be. We do need to go through and install all of the flaps in there, which should not be too bad. It does come with all the hardware, all the bolts. Now there is one thing that I do uh, that I would like to mention with this. Normally on EJs, you have an O-ring for the oil pickup. We are going to be using OEM 3-Bond. Because the setup does not utilize an O-ring, we are going to be using Fuji 3-Bond. Now something to keep in mind is I was a little worried about using 3-Bond also, but you gotta remember Remember, 3-Bond is what seals all of this up and keeps oil from leaking out of the engines. So if it can keep an engine together, it can definitely keep our oil pickup stable. Now, with these RCM pumps, what they claim is they pre-pack them. I don't know if they actually do. Uh, I also don't know if they lock tight all the bolts shut. So we are going to disassemble this oil pump real quick, fill it with Vaseline, and then lock tight all of the bolts back down on the plate. Ah, oh, look at that, it ain't pre-packed. Ain't nothing in there. Always pre-pack these guys. Red Loctite these hoes. They will back out. I've seen it happen way too many times. If you guys don't know what this is, it's called an impact driver. It essentially makes it so you can put bolts on and possibly tight or screws like this without destroying them. So with the Loctite on here, this thing should not back out, which is exactly what we want. So we have this thing pre-packed with Vaseline. We've got all the bolts Loctited down. Now the whole point of just pre-packing these is so that way, when you go to build oil pressure for the first time, the pump won't cavitate. It's the whole point of doing this. Always clean off the mating surfaces. Now when it comes to lining up the oil pump, you've got two horizontal spots that'll line up with the crank. And then once those are lined up, you should be able to get the oil pump on. Just like that. I saw I went through, packed it, got it all installed, got red Loctite on everything. So now that we've got that done, we're gonna go ahead and set up our oil pan. So like I said, um, actually what we'll first do is get the baffle on and the pickup on, and then we'll go through and put in all of the flapper dues for our actual oil pan, get it sealed up and get it on the engine. So let me get this guy flipped over. Let's get our baffle lined up in there, get everything set up, 
Get some three bond put on on the mating surface of our actual pickup here. And get everything installed nicely. We want to ensure no failures. Say it with me, ensure no failures. That's right, good job everybody. I bought Loctite and Bolt. Rebond it, more red Loctite. Always wipe up your squeeze out. I don't know why people don't ever wipe up their squeeze out. Wipe up your freaking squeeze out. Way better than our last setup, which was stock. So, dude, vast improvements. Absolutely vast improvements. Everything right here is Loctited down to ensure that nothing vibrates out because this is the last thing that we want. So, let me clear off some space in the back. Let's go through and get our oil pan set up with our trap doors and baffles and everything. We can get that installed on here also. Installing these, you wanna make sure that you install them this way. If anybody else is doing this, you wanna make sure that the trap door opens to let oil in to where the oil pickup is, but not out, so it's gonna stay closed. Ow, I just stabbed myself with a razor blade. Fuck, dude. Then we can go through and get the oil pan installed onto our engine. I got to a good stopping point for where I want to be. I got the oil pump on, crank sensor on with our adapter. So I no longer need to run a modified crank sprocket. I can run this adapter now, which will pull the timing off of the front teeth there instead of the rear teeth. Uh, because if you just use an EJ25 oil pump on an EG33, it reads off the rear teeth and you need the front teeth for that. Sorry, I have the WRX warming up right now. But oil pump's on, crank sprocket's on. Uh, crank sensors on, water pumps on, oil pumps on, oil pickup, and baffle is. But I did have to modify this pan a little bit for it to fit. The pan fits great. It just needed a little bit of modification. There's only like five of these pans that I think they made. One of the issues was I had to bend the oil dipstick tube because it was hitting the water pump. So I just heated it up, smacked it with a hammer, it bent out where I needed it to go. I could probably bend it back a little bit if need be, but I think it'll be okay right there. Uh, I also had to clearance the front of the flange right there to be able to clear the oil pump. As you guys can see, I had to grind it back a little bit because it was hitting uh, down here. And then the other thing I had to do was up the hole size on all of these one. I think the pan warped a little bit when it was being welded, but it shouldn't be an issue. I got that thing nice and tight. I went around it a whole bunch. I did it in like a, a star pattern. So the next day I went and got our cylinder head dropped off at the machine shop. They went through and resurfaced it, cleaned it. We're gonna get the cylinder heads on, but the downside is, is we can only fork down one of them. There's a damaged head stud somewhere where the nut is rounded off and the threads are destroyed on it. So I messaged Jeremy to see if we can't get one replacement ordered. We're gonna go through, get one of the cylinder heads on right now. And then once that new stud comes in, we can go ahead and get that one on. It just kind of sucks. We need to do a dry fit on all of this before we can go ahead and torque it all down. We've got, okay, so we've got our oil port there, there, there. Gotta make sure they all line up. The biggest thing when it comes to putting an engine together like this, mm -hmm. making sure everything is clean. What happens if it's not? It might not seal. I'm just going to go there, right there. Play line up the holes like that. Now there's something we gotta do before we go to fully put this in, which I think will be good. There are very specific studs that need to go here because if you look, there's a cam gear that actually goes right in here. And this cam gear, you'll see, will go down there. And if it smacks that guy, then it's a, obviously a really bad day for us. So we don't want that to happen. So what I'm actually going to do here, this is the easiest way that I've found to do this is take a little bit of the red assembly lube, put it on the, the tops of these, and then if our cam gear touches, it'll be red. So, push this guy down. And we're clean. It's a good sign. So we're gonna do the same thing. Just kind of set it in there. These are always fun to get out. 
and clean. So we are good. We're good to assemble. All right, now we're just gonna go through and get all these started. We're gonna go through and torque them all. Yeah, just so it doesn't move on me. Right, so there's 30 on that one. Now we're going to go up to 60, and we're going all the way up to 120, 130. Number six is right above it. Number seven's the bottom, right? We suggest using the same torque sequence as stock and the torque amount is still uncharted territory, but we suggest 120 on the outside and 130 on the inside. Just hold the engine. Hold it! No, just hold the engine. <laughs> oh, it's gonna go! All right, you ready? No, yeah. <sighs> Try to brace myself. <sighs> oh, there's one. I'm gonna call him back up, hang on. Are right, you ready? No. Oh, fuck yeah, we got that one. <sighs> So we got the right hand cylinder head torque down. We did 130 foot pounds on the inside four studs and 120 on the outside. If you guys look in here, this is the biggest concern I always have with these is because our cam gears are internal in the cylinder head, we have to make sure that these don't protrude into the cam gear. Uh, otherwise it'll be obviously catastrophic failure. Also huge shout out to the machine shop for fixing this. Uh, I had tried to fix this in car and Gila coiled it and it always leaked oil. So they went through, they welded material in there, uh, ground it back down flat again used an alignment dowel to get the hole perfect. So a huge shout out to Heads Up on that one. So next up, we need to get our valve buckets in here. Now, like I said, out front upgraded us to shimless buckets. So I have them all here and I've got the original diagram that I sent them. So we got the back of the engine, the front of the engine, the top, the bottom, uh, exhaust and intake. And then Jeremy went through and he labeled all of the bucket sizes. So that way, if we get mixed up at all, we know where they go. So I'm gonna grab some assembly lube, uh, start getting this guy, all these buckets put in. That way we should be good. It's gonna be dots on the back side of this gear, which there are, they're right there. So on the back side of the cam gear, there's two dots and there's two dots. Those are gonna line up with the intake cam. There's also an orientation for this. So I want those two dots right there because on the snout, the snout's going to point directly up. I've done this enough times to have to figure this out enough, so. Cylinder three, which is gonna be exhaust right there. There should be two dots right there, which there are. So I can go ahead and get that guy in there. Now for the fun part, I'm gonna get the other cam cleaned, lubed. Now on the back side of here, this notch is also going to face upwards. There should be a dot right there, which there is. And that dot is going to line up with the other one. And both of the notches are facing directly upwards. We have our service screw in there right there. That went way smoother than it should have. Which is a good thing. It's a good thing. And the service screw, like I said, is just kind of a sprung screw that holds all this together for the intake cam. So once it comes out, it unsprings uh, and locks in place to the exhaust cam. So now our cams are in on the side. So now we just need to get the front cam cap on, the plugs in. Spark plugs in. I'm actually gonna grab the spark plugs now because this is something important I wanna show you guys because I used the wrong spark plugs last time, which is a dummy mistake on my part. Last time we did this, I thought that this engine took EJ25 spark plugs. Um, that is not the case at all. The plug number for this, if anyone is looking, is NGK3764. That is one step colder NGK plugs that are the proper size plug. Don't make the same mistake that I did and use EJ25 plugs because um, they're physically too long. So. so for now, we've got our new plugs that are gonna be going in. They are physically short. If I had an EJ25 plug here, I'd show you guys, but they're physically shorter. So that way they actually fit in. Um, I should probably make sure that they thread in also, which they do. So keep that in mind. Like I said, it's the NGK3764 for this engine. Do not use uh, what, 2709s or 20, whatever the EJ ones are. 
Don't use those ones, they're not the right plugs. Melanie went through and did a fantastic job cleaning up the cam cap, so now we're gonna put sealant back on it. I'm gonna do a very light layer going around it, spread it around with my finger, get this guy back on the engine. We'll get it torqued down, we can put the new seals in, we can get the timing cover on. You put too much of the sealant on, it'll get underneath onto the cam journals, and you get the stuff on cam journals, it can uh, definitely cause some damage, so you just want like a super light layer. Lube these guys up for our cams. 10 mils in here. And tighten them down. These only go to seven foot pounds. They do not go to the moon. But while Melanie cleans up my valve cover for me, I'm gonna go through and start putting some of the other accessories on here, such as like knock sensors and things like that. I got the front timing cover on. I need to order the cam seals for this. I thought I had some, I guess I don't. So we are going to go through, put a small little bead of gasket maker. and just go boop, just like so. Oh baby, you got it. Hey, like my torque wrench. You make my booty go smack. I'm starting to feel the fight. Let me take Melanie up Just let you go free rain on the other side. You think you can do it by yourself? No. Nope. Maybe. Nope. I might be able to, well, I don't know if I'll be able to twerk it down, but. Twerk it down? Oh my gosh. I think you can twerk it down if anyone can. It is the next day. There's not too much else I can do on the EG right now. I do have good news though. The new head studs have already shipped out in addition to the flywheel bolts for the crank. So that way, once those come in, which I'm guessing they'll be here either tomorrow or Saturday, we should be good to finish assembling this EG33, get it loaded back up in the car. I had to buy two new half moons because the two that I had, uh, I don't know where they went because I'm missing two half moons for this engine. On older cylinder heads, you got something called half moons. That's how they line hone the engines. On the newer ones, you don't have those anymore. So let me actually, sh I, don't, I never showed you the other studs. So let me show you those real quick because they are, they're pretty toast. This happened from extreme heat in the cylinder head. Um, the threads got all dickered up on that one. That one may have been a me fault from when I tried to take it out. Um, this one, I don't quite know what happened, but something destroyed that one. So we are waiting on one short and one long stud to come in as well as a couple new nuts. Uh, then we should be good because we got four in the middle, which would, yeah, we're just missing one of each. So that'll be eight total. Plus both of these had rounded out tops from uh, the heat because when we tried to get these things out, they were just so stuck in there that both of the tops rounded on these two. So we'll have some new fresh studs going in so that way everything will be nice and proper. But this thing is just coming out looking beautiful. It looks like a little inline three engine right now. I'm like, dude, I, can, I can't wait to have this back in the car and we can get this thing running again. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. It's gonna be like part one of putting the engine together of our thousand wheel horsepower EG33 because this thing will do a thousand horsepower with this new setup. Uh, that Precision 7675 is rated to 1350 horsepower. ID 2600s will definitely break the thousand wheel horsepower mark, especially having six of them. Uh, the two wall Bureau 525s, everything's just set up to do four digits on this car and it's gonna be fucking wild. I, dude, I, I just want to hear it run again. I'll probably order new fenders today. Uh, I'm going to follow up with Fenderist on our wide body kit to see if we have any updates on that. But I think that's where we're going to stop here. Now, once again, reminder, as always, we do have our 500 wheel horsepower EJ25 engine giveaway going on right now. That is going to be that EJ25 short block with cylinder head package. That'll include Kelford 272 cams, GSC intake and exhaust valves, and Brian Crower valve springs. I just got through a large batch of orders this morning, so those got dropped off at USPS. Other ones are shipping out, so things are going smooth. Every $25 you guys spend over at www.smedia.net gets you one entry with no cap on entries. This is open to all of North America, Canada, and the United States right now. But anyways, like I said, that's all I got for you guys on this one. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it might turn for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be able to put it in one of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. But with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So peace out homies.